Springfield, Pennsylvania, near Philadelphia. ESPN's exclusive live coverage of the PBA Tour brings you the Pepsi Open. Five of the sport's best go for great big prize money and valuable points. Now, let's meet our five finalists. From Bolingbrook, Illinois, with three career PBA titles, one of 14 players to roll a perfect game on TV, Steve Jarris. In his second year on tour, making his second TV appearance from Roseburg, Oregon, Blaze Bedoya. From Highlands Ranch, Colorado, near Denver, also in his second year on tour, making his first ever TV appearance today, Frank Guccione. He has three career PBA wins, second of the current PBA world rankings list, the 1998 Rookie of the Year from Dallas, Texas, Chris Barnes. This guy looks familiar. From Hollywood, Florida, 12 career wins. This week became the newest member of the PBA's Million Dollar Club. Normally spend Sundays with us in the ESPN House booth. Instead, he made the show our own Randy Peterson. Those are the five finalists for the 2002 Pepsi Open in the championship round. And hello again, everyone. Great atmosphere here in suburban Philadelphia. Dave Ryan alongside Brian Boss, who's filling in today for Randy Peterson, has more pressing issues at hand. Five new bowlers, Brian, in the field from last week in Grand Rapids, all with a lot on the line today. Well, there's a nice mix of players. Chris Barnes making every match play appearance this year, still looking for title number one. Randy Peterson with 12 victories. We know he knows how to talk, but he wants to show you all he can still bowl. Steve Jarris, not unfamiliar with winning. He's won three times. His last time he won, he shot a 300 on national TV. And the unknowns, Blyce Bedoya, this is his second telecast, both of them in this great state of Pennsylvania. And then we have Frank Gucciani, his first telecast ever. Will he be nervous? Our own Randy Peterson trying to go all the way through match play, the first time ever in PBA history with a new format, undefeated to win a championship. Third member of our crew today is Leslie Goodell. She's joined now by Blaze Bedoya. Well, after Blaze found out that he was going to be making the show today, he said Pennsylvania rocks. That's because his two TV shows he made have been here in the Keystone State, one in Erie last year and then today. Obviously, experience in any sport is invaluable. How much is it going to mean today to get this kind of experience? You know, it, it's one of those things to me that uh, experience is, is priceless. Um, you know, I, if I could buy it, I would. But, uh, you know, the more I can get here, the more I can bowl, uh, the, the better I can do. So. You said you really enjoyed your first TV show. How are your nerves today? <laughs> They're good. Uh, the crowd's awesome, though. I mean, I think the crowd's what's, uh, what's really going to make and break today. I think uh, Pennsylvania's been wonderful, and uh, I just want to keep it going. You'll notice Blaze's uh, glasses. Thank you very much, Blaze. He, these are prescription glasses. He is nearsighted, and he uh, said he wanted to go with a, something with a little bit of style. Dave? Leslie, I'd say so. The Oakleys today for Blaze Bedoya. The March to the PBA World Championship continues. The top eight get that automatic berth into match play at the World Championship. In March, Danny Wiseman has bowled very well this year. Barnes is here trying to overtake Walter Ray Williams Jr. He will with a victory today. Steve Jarris from just outside Chicago. His wife, June, arriving just in time to watch him bowl. Starts us off perfectly. You know, last night, Steve Jarris was the wild card. He didn't know it until the last ball when Frank Gucciani was bowling. When Frank struck in the 10th frame, he made the show. It went right down to the wire for Steve. Blyce making his second telecast, a big power play. You're going to see a real high backswing. He's just going to whack the ball at the bottom. A lot of speed, a lot of rotation. One of the TV pair and a great start for Blaze Bedoy as well from Roseburg, Oregon. Right there. His match play wins this week. Best of seven against Machuga, who was in our TV show, Brian, last week in Grand Rapids. You know, when you see stats like that in their close matches, three and two, three and two, that means he had to strike a lot. He had to strike out in the ninth and tenth frame, and that seasons you for today's event. been more than a year 
As Brian mentioned, since Blaise Bedoy has been on TV, November 3rd of 2001, career best, a third place finish in Erie, Pennsylvania. Hot start for Blaise Bedoya. What a great start for Blaze. Just a super high backswing at the bottom. He just whacks it. Tremendous rotation and a perfect way to start the match. Two strikes. Steve Jarris, 13th year on tour, and he makes it as the wild card because our own Randy Peterson took care of him, three zip in the round of eight. Slightly high, and a four pin does not get tripped up. Seven and four, that's the best match play record trip those. amongst those four. Baker, Wiseman, and Himmler, and as Brian mentioned, went right down to the last ball of the round of eight match last night. Steve told me today he actually had some of his equipment packed up for the trip to Long Island. Picks up a four pin in his mark. The first spare out of the way. <laughs> Likes that. You know, prior to this week, Steve will tell you that this is, he was in a slump. He's been working hard. He went back to some basic things. He, he was trying to get a little bit too creative in, in, in things, and that just, that wasn't his game. So he went back to what he does best, and he's really an excellent shot maker. First time all year, he tells us he's relaxed and going well from start to finish of a tournament. Continues his consistent play with wife, June, as we mentioned, flying in first thing this morning once she found out Steve had made the TV show in the final five. The twins are home, though. Son Evan, daughter Hannah being watched by family and friends in Chicagoland, not far from Joliet, Illinois. You know, in Blaze's first telecast last year, he bowled an outstanding game. He shot 240 and, and lost to a 270 game. So I don't think he was that nervous, but he's, he's really got a tremendous amount of talent looking for three strikes in a row. Triple here. Puts him up. 20 pins. Pocket. Perfect. Flush strike. We're going to look at Blaze. Look at those eyes. Tremendous wrist action at the bottom. He knew it. There's a lot of confidence in that swing. Starts with a triple. Looking now for a four bagger and a 30 pin lead. Doesn't look nervous. Gets a break, almost crossed over on the head pin, but takes them all down into the pit. Trips the four. This ball's going to be a little high in the pocket. The two pin goes to the wall and snaps the four from behind. Oh, thank you, he says, thank you. That's the way you want to start, a quick four bagger. Back to Jess. On lane 24, also in the pocket. Real pretty strike there. That's more like it. Come on. You'll see Steve with not his eye as a backswing, but he's really one of the best shot makers out here, and he just showed it right there. This week, the average at 234.1 pins. Strike and spare conversion rate. The new numbers we're tracking for you in ESPN's presentation of the PBA Tour. Looking to cut his deficit to 10 pins with a strike here in the fifth. Three triple. Yeah. 10 pin. Lazy 10 pin. Didn't, didn't quite catch that. Come on. All right, right here. He knows he didn't quite catch it all. He's just praying for something to hit the 10 pin. No, didn't happen. 93%. That means he missed more than one of them. But not this time. Gets his mark. Picks up the 10 pin. <laughs> Almost. Blaze has become a workaholic. He, he really struggled the first few weeks out here. And every time you see when he misses those cut, he's out on the lanes. He bowls for hours at a time. He's just he's a student of the game. And he wants to be the best someday. Looking for a five bagger to start. Just his second ever TV appearance. 31 pin lead. Eight pin. Just a perfect shot. Solid eight. 
No, we're going to see the five pin. The pin right in the middle. It's going to go straight back. The ball misses it by about a quarter of an inch. But in some respects, the strike he had on the last shot on lane 23 was a little bit lucky, so things kind of even themselves out. No trouble getting right. his mark. Single pin conversion. See the numbers so far this week for Blaze Bedoya of Roseburg, Oregon. Same hometown as another PBA bowler, Brian Smith. And they both have red hair. That's right. Must Brian. be something about the uh, area. <laughs> Brian made our show in Memphis a few weeks back. Also in search of his first title. Crossing over. You know, this lane, th this that week we've had a lot of hook in the lanes. When the players miss a little bit left, that's what's going to happen. He's fortunate to leave just the 3-6. He's trying to get that ball all the way out to about the second or third ball, and it looked like he hit about five that time. Tells us his cell phone did not stop ringing after he made the TV show. At least 20 calls he could count. All of his family and friends, fellow bowlers, congratulating him. Gets his mark on lane 23. Good match in the wild card to start our action from the Pepsi Open. We're just outside Philadelphia, and we're coming back to you in a few moments. ESPN's live coverage of the PBA continues next. ESPN's exclusive live coverage of the PBA Pepsi Open is brought to you by Pepsi Cola. Experience the joy of Pepsi. By Miller Highlight. To live simply, proudly, boldly, manly, this is the Highlight. And by Dexter, the number one bowling shoe in the world. What's your size? First time the PBA Tour has been back in the Philly area in some 40 years. We are glad to return. The ninth of 22 events this year on the PBA Tour. 20 of those, of course, coming in U.S. cities. Now in Philadelphia. Blaze Padilla is hooked up in a very good wild card match with Steve Jarris. Steve down 18 pins halfway through the match. Still anybody's game. Steve, one of the guys who likes to blow a little moisture in his thumb each time. Ball man 24. Flush in the pocket again. This week we use pattern E, which measures 35 feet in length is, and is the shortest of the five patterns. You're going to see a lot of people like Randy playing the direct outside line, but all the other players are going to play the deep inside line, trying to get it out real close to the gutter. There's a risk-reward factor. We saw a lot of gutter balls this year or this week, and we hopefully won't see any today. Looking for a double. Strike here. He's down by eight pins. 259 max right now for him. He's got a double. He was running out as soon as he let go. Great shot. For more on the oil patterns, you can log on to PBA.com. And as we speak, a live chat session going on with Hall of Famer Pete Weber. He's answering all of your questions. PBA.com, the best bowling site out there. So log on and chat with Pete about what he sees. Pepsi open. But Doyle looking good. Just a carbon copy of some of the other shots he's shown. We're going to see this ball go from about the, that was the 13th board, all the way out to the third board and just high flush. Great shot. And now a strike here would extend his lead to 18 pins. 68% strike. That's, that's a lot of strikes, Dave. Eighth frame working on a strike. Only leads by eight at this stage. Speaking of strikes, five of seven frames he's struck. Looking for more. Lane 23. Another. Looks like he got that one all the way out to about the second board. And this week, if you really get out to the first or second board, it's going to come screaming back. Almost a little high, but just held on enough to take an 18-pin lead. 
Jarris continuing his quest for a fourth career title. Last one in 99, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Seven pin. No. Well, just a bad break. It could have been a strike, but Blaze on that lane just threw it absolutely perfect, and he made Steve do the same thing. He didn't, and he's faced with a single pin spare. This is going to go all the way out to the third board. Normally, the head pin will snap the seven out. It didn't this time. Got his mark. Picks up the seven, but he wanted more. And that appearance in Chattanooga actually rolled a 300 game at the time. was the 13th ever in PBA history to roll a 300 on TV. It wasn't in the championship match. That's only been done a couple times. Ninth frame. Steve can strike out for 238. Blyce working on a 237 clip. So a strike here is huge. Gotta have it. Delivers. He got it. That keeps the pressure on Blyze. Now, right now, Blyze is already working on a 237 pace. If he strikes on this next shot, he will be in the 240 paces, and all he'll have to do is stay clean the last, last frame, 10th frame. He wants to get it over with right now. He's been flush on this lane just every time. We'll show you on ESPN in sync. Looking for a triple. Got and the eight pin was the last to go. Great shot. And this ball's going right towards the gutter, but it's going to get out to about the third, the second board. That's right about the third board, and just another carbon copy perfect strike. He needs to stay clean in the tenth to win this match. Just needs the mark to win. And end the tournament for Steve Jarris. Dad Gill, Mom Jan, his girlfriend Alexa back home oh in Oregon watching closely. Oh, hey, oh, break. That ball coming in a little high, trips the four just like before. We're going to see the two pin cut right between the four seven. The nine's going on, everything's happening. He doesn't know it until the last second. Oh, that's victory right there. Moving on. hit the head pin. Six pins on this ball will win the match. Eight strikes for him in this match. Make it nine, trips out the 10 pin late. What a wild card game from Blaze Bedoya. And our Randy Peterson awaits Blaze in the semifinals. This one is over, so we're going to fast track to the end of the match to save some time. Steve Jarris, an excellent week for him, will be denied a fourth career title. And they're heading off to Sios at Long Island. Next week, he'll give it another shot. We'll be there at 1 o'clock Eastern as well here on ESPN. Madoya's day will continue. What a game for him, Brian. Well, you know, you look what? at his last two games, 260, 230 on TV. He's averaging 250. Just his second career show. Madoya shines today. Good ball, Good ball. Good ball. Good ball. Next up, for Blaise Bedoya from the Great Northwest, our own Randy Peterson in the semifinals. He dispatches of Steve Jarris with an excellent match. First, though, Frank Guccione will take on the former PBA Rookie of the Year and Chris Barnes. It comes your way from Philly next. In our final five today, total of 18 titles in one major. Randy Peterson won the PBA National Championships back in 1987. Tell you about boxing coming up on ESPN at 2.30 Eastern Time. NABF flyweight champion Brian Valoria puts his title on the line against the challenge. Alberto Rossell, 12-round ESPN boxing special. Immediately following our coverage of the PBA Pepsi Open. For more, log on to ESPN.com. One of those many titles belongs to Chris Barnes, who's joined now by our Leslie Goodell.
Some very intense matches for Chris Barnes this week. As he said yesterday, he hasn't been able to coast at all. Is that all that work that you've had to do just to get here work for you or against you at this point? Oh, I think anytime you're battle tested, it works for you. You know, I feel like match play is my specialty, but uh, boy, I had a lot of sweaters out, out this week. And uh, I was lucky I was able to come through against some, some of the best in the business. And we'll see if that continues today. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. Leslie, all the international competition Chris Barnes has been through, so much match play experience. Does that create a big advantage in your mind, Brian? Oh, big time. This, this whole sport, is, it, it's a one-on-one -on -one game. It's all about match play, in particular the last two frames. We're going to see Chris play a line very similar to what we saw Blaze Bedoya. It's going on lane 23, one of the TV pair. And rings a 10-pin. It's interesting, last night in his match against Tom Baker, he threw a lot of 10-pins, a lot of them at start, but he needed a strike to win a certain game, and he got it after leaving four solid 10s in a row. See a hard straight ball. Using his Pepsi stir ball. Here at the 2002 Pepsi Open. Now our first look at Frank Gucciana. He's got an athletic game. He's got very fast feet, tremendous hand. Gets a lot of speed. It's live coverage. The PBA Tour here on ESPN. Gucciani in the pocket. Brian, do you remember your first ever TV show, your first ever ball? Did you strike? I didn't throw it like that at all. <laughs> I didn't throw it. Road to the championship round for him. The best of seven round of 32, and then two best of five wins, including a tight one over Himmler. In which he needed a strike to win, and he got it. A double to start. I tell you, I've seen Frank bowl an awful lot, and when he gets it going, he can strike with the best one. Just tremendous hand action. Real quick feet, wax it at the bottom. Ball's a little bit light, but he just dances pins. Great way to start. Third TV show of the season for Chris Barnes. He will gladly take the 10 pin going down. We're going to see the 7 10. Briefly, the head pin comes across. Thank you. Nine spares, fine. Just get one. He says, okay, thank you. Thank you. And once again, a straight ball. Pepsi spare ball. Seven pin. No trouble for him there. The only player on tour this year to make match play. Nine for nine. All nine tour stops so far. And this week, he got by you. Pretty good match. Well, he needs to thank me because we had tight <laughs> matches. We, it was really good. It, it was a fun to be uh, a participant in that. I seasoned him for today, but he's down 11 pins early. Tom Baker, Buffalo, following one step shy of a second straight TV show. Late trip of a 10 pin. You know, we see the power players with good speed and good hand rotation. They get such pin action. Pins flying all over, and the guys with the real slow ball speed don't get those kind of strikes. We're envious of it. Now, his first TV appearance ever, he started out with the first two strikes, looking to extend his lead to 21 pins. We'll see how he handles the nerves. Yeah! Yeah! A triple for Guccione to start. Just a, a great power player, very athletic, real fast feet. Just gets up there, a tremendous hand action. Does he know it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Triple to start. Strike here will have a 31 pin lead. Speaking of athleticism, snowboarding is his thing in the winter time out in the Does not ski. Crossing over. That's Almost a very good miss. Slips. A very good miss. See him laugh a little bit. Just a terrible shot. He knows it and he's thankful that he only got nine. Highlands Ranch, Colorado, not far from Denver. Missed it. Ooh, that's Open stuck. frame, and he missed the six. That's stuck on his thumb. You see him looking at it, squeezing it. 
See how far he almost hit the arrows on that shot. Looking down at his thumb. Ow. Now we'll see how someone in his first ever TV show handles the pressure. And this is something we'll see a lot of Chris Barnes. He may balk occasionally, and there is a shot clock issue, 25 seconds. He told us before the match, it happens commonly with him. He's not going to throw a ball he's not comfortable with. Often he strikes after he stops the delivery. This time it's a 10 pitch. And a strike there would have put him momentarily into the lead. 25 seconds to initiate the shot. First violation, $100 and 500 big ones each time after that. Picks up his mark. And a sigh of relief from Frank down there watching him. Excellent week for Chris Barnes. He says the karma was very good for him. Just that wants like one a, more step. That looks like a typical week for Chris Barnes. Averaging 230, winning every time. His last step would be to finish and win for the first time this year. Chris has all the talent to be one of the greatest superstars that have ever played this game. Just tremendous talent. Oh, he's back into the pocket. Chris, we see him get the ball started real early. High back swing, posts up at the foul line. Tremendous wrist action. Dances the pins. Let's see if Frank can regroup after that last little mishap. On lane 24. Ten pin wiggles and stays up. Okay, let's see if we can let go of this one. Just didn't quite catch this one like he did the last couple shots. The six pin's gonna nudge it, nick it, but it's not gonna fall down. And he's got another spare to shoot after just missing one. Heard him say to himself, let's make sure we release this properly. Mm -hmm. Single pin conversion numbers for each. Delivers with ease there. And a big sigh of relief. It's been quite a week for Frank Guccione. Having to go through the PTQ, the pre-tournament qualifier, nine extra games because too many people applied for too few spots. And he barely made it. He was 40th out of those 41 guys. So here he goes from barely making the tournament to having a chance to win right now. And he holds an eight pin lead. Pocket and a ringing 10 pin for Guccione. Ah, Christ. And we're gonna watch him shoot this bear. His roommate is Eugene McCune, who throws harder than anybody except this guy. Roommate's throwing the hardest at spares, probably around 27, 28 miles an hour. I can't even think of throwing it that hard. There's no finesse in this, just throw it as hard as you can. Eugene McCune won his first ever career title last week. His roommate, who told him to trust himself. That was Eugene's theme a week ago that worked so well at the Banquet Classic outside Grand Rapids, Michigan. Kent Frank Guccione get it to work for him as well. Head to head with Chris Barnes. A big semifinal match rolls on next. We started with 144 of uh, the world's best bowlers. Fifth straight week on tour, a full field which is connected to the story about Frank Guccione having to go to the PTQ to make it all the way to the TV show. Checking in with this week's Days In On The Road. We're off to the AMS Syosset Lanes, Long Island next week, 1 o'clock Eastern time here on ESPN for the Cambridge Credit Classic. Then Latham, New York, and the TOC Arena Finals for each the entire Mohegan Sun Arena will host the PBA Tournament of Champions. Great event in December. Be sure to log on to PBA.com. For arena tickets, they're available now. And the regional events going on in Texas and Fort Walton Beach, Florida. <laughs> Barnes struck in the fifth before a commercial break. A double puts him up three. 
This was the lane yesterday that he left four solid pins in a row and needed a strike to win in the tenth frame. So he's got some he's got some bad karma about this lane. Six frame. Ten pin again. Again. We're going to watch this ball go from the 16th board all the way out to theirs to almost to the first board, come flying back. Six pin wraps around it again, just like the last shot. Showing your results from the round of 16. Here at the Pepsi Open. Okay. Talking to the lane. Now, I know from watching on TV a couple of times this year, you, you chat quite a bit at those pins in the lane, right? Does you have to. You have to. <laughs> you, if, if you can't talk to yourself or talk to somebody, now you have to. You know, the folks back home often wonder why we leave solid tens. There's a, a variety of reasons. Uh, it could be the way that the pins are set up. But right now, Chris Barnes, trailing by seven, needs to keep the pressure on. Flush in the pocket on lane 23. Damn, that's struck. Look at those eyes, right on the target, never leaves them. All right here, he's saying just, he knows it's a little bit high. Perfect shot. Chris Barnes wants to catch up with Walter Ray Williams Jr. for the points lead. Avoiding a split is Guccione, but he has a 6'10 to work with here for his mark. Quite happy to leave just the 6'10. Still maintains a slim five pin lead through seven frames, assuming that he makes this spare. And we're going to see the rocket to the 6'10 again. He covers and gets his mark. Before this week for Frank Guccione, the best appearance on tour. Another High Life Classic near Chicago, 61st place finish. 104th last week at the Banquet Classic near Grand Rapids. So from 104 through the PTQ to the show. <laughs> I mean, what a road for Guccione. Crossing over. Little Brooklyn strike. He knows he drew a bad shot, but that's a very happy man right there. As soon as he lets go, he's, he's saying, please, please, give me help, help, and he got it. Actually, it was a perfect solid Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Now he's got to sit down and collect himself because he'll be finishing first. Barnes down by five. Strike here, puts him up five, looking for a double. Has it. No tip in that time. Barnes now with a five-pin lead. If he strikes here, it doesn't matter what Frank does in the ninth and tenth. He can't shut him out. If he doesn't strike, Frank can go up in the ninth, tenth, and eleven and shut him out. He struck the last three times on this left lane. Barnes made our first domestic TV show. In Wichita, lost to Dave DeAntremont. In the championship. He gets Wants to get back. Yeah. And a good break. Yes. Good bonus. Look at that cupped wrist at the top. He starts it like that. Oh, there's some excitement. He knows there's nothing Frank can do right now, but put the pressure on. Looking for a double in the ninth and a difficult split. The big four. Mm. Well, Frank probably just a little bit nervous right now. He didn't get that ball out as far as he'd like to, right through the heart, big four. I think we're going to see this one at 30 miles an hour. Try to bounce something out, and he almost did. Just about got it. On the big four split. But with that opening, he'll need to strike out to, to make Barnsley show up and get good count on his first ball. 
That's about 30 miles an hour, and that's the advantage of throwing it hard. You get those pins flying around. He almost made. That ball was airborne almost the entire way down the lane. Just ripped it. Needs two strikes. Still not out of it. Second open, though, of the match. And that will be it for Frank's first telecast. Still a great week. Chris knows he's won it. One to go. Now, considering that Frank, this summer, worked all summer long and saved enough money to come out here and bowl on tour, he finances himself, he has no sponsor, and being that he only made $1,000 in his first few events, and he almost does hit again, this was a huge day for him. And I'm sure we'll see him again. Enjoys home building in the off season. Just throws it as hard as he can. Oh, come on, he wants some air time. Give me a spare, I can throw another shot. With his partner, Dean Wyman. They run Frankie G framing back home near Denver. And that, as Brian mentioned, helped finance his run at another possible championship. But Chris Barnes, the better bowler today will advance off to the championship match. Now, Chris taking an opportunity. He knows he's won the match. He's going to play around a little bit. He's going to try a different line, try a different ball, in case the lanes transpire during the next match. He'll have to wait a game before it comes back. Another 10-pin on that lane. Keep that in mind for the championship match against either our Randy Peterson or Blaze Padilla. Randy's watching. His semifinal match comes up next. Pepsi spare a ball here for Barnes. Confident words to the crowd here in Philadelphia. The great week ends for Frank Cuccioni and his first ever TV show. Chris Barnes saw it when he had to be. He's off to the championship match in search of his fourth career title. ESPN's exclusive live coverage of the PBA Pepsi Open is brought to you by Odor Eaters. Put Odor Eaters in, kick foot odor and wetness out. By Bear Aspirin. Take it for pain, take it for life. And by Days Inn, no matter where you travel. You'll always find a Days Inn hotel right down the lane. And a great crowd on hand. We're back with you at the 2002 Pepsi Open near Philly. Chris Barnes and Blaze Bedoya, winners so far. Barnes to the finals, Bedoya to the semi. Let's learn more about Chris Barnes. And this week's Miller High Life gets it over. Chris Barnes. I grew up in Topeka, Kansas, and uh, my dad took me home when I was six years old. I played a lot of basketball, I played a lot of baseball, uh, some football, golf, and then I bowled all year round, my three games on the weekend, some tournaments. But uh, I didn't. I was a late bloomer as far as bowling is concerned. I did play very intense, and uh, you know, I, I am a perfectionist uh, to a fault at times. It was my first win in Erie, Pennsylvania. It was a pretty magical day from all the way Probably the one thing I do do is I tie my shoes a lot just to keep my hands busy in between shots. Macaroni Grill uh, is a favorite. Well, hopefully I get better every week. That's really my, my goal is, is to play at a better level and uh, each week than I did the week before and, and really finish some tournaments off. Uh, and that's probably the one thing I, I need to improve on. That's Chris Barnes of this week's Miller High Life Get to Know Them. All right, Randy Peterson, an excellent career record on TV, he tries to bring that win percentage up with his 13th career title. First, though, Blaze Bedoya stands in his way in the semifinals. Normally, Randy in the booth with us, and now he's got his game face on. Bedoya, Peterson, next. Welcome back, Scroll Lance here in Springfield, Pennsylvania. I'm Randy Peterson along with Leslie Goodell. Enough, enough. Wait. No holding the microphone for okay. you today. Obviously, a little confidence for Randy Peterson right now, as he should have it, because he has not lost a game this week, 10 straight for you. How did you do that, and should we expect anything less today? Well, let's hope not. How I did it, I have no idea. I, I got a lot of breaks. Opponents uh, didn't take me out when they had a chance, and I struck out when I needed to.
Well, Randy said yesterday that he doesn't notice the cameras. I don't know about you guys. I'm not buying it. Okay, a little bit. <laughs> Dave. Not exactly camera shy. Leslie, is he? Our own Randy Peterson. We're proud to see Randy make the TV show. For the first time in two years, he's not won a title in more than three years. However, Blaze Bedoya has other ideas. Blaze, I tell you what, you know, his first two games on television, 247, 266, or whatever he shot there, he's, he doesn't appear to be nervous. Let's see if he can get going with an early strike. <laughs> On line 23, avoids the 710. Well, we're going to see the 710, or we saw the 710 momentarily. Pretty much the same line. He's going to go, there's 16 out to the third board. The 710's there for a minute, but because of that speed, the head comes flying across, and he only has the 710. Singleton conversions indicate he should make this, which he does. Right, he really appeared relaxed to me in talking with Blaze before play today. Speaking of relaxed, not exactly tense was Randy in his interview with Leslie a moment ago. Well, I think that attributes to his win record on TV. You know, he's comfortable under the camera. He likes he likes performing. He's uh, just very comfortable in this atmosphere. First ball on TV in some time, and the four pin stays up. And we see Randy playing a little bit more of a direct shot here. He's saying, okay, I know it. I, I didn't strike. What kind of a spare am I going to leave? Nine, nine, oh, eight, nine. Nine's fine. Since match play started September 2001, we've not had the bowler go all the way. Perfect match play record and win the championship. Randy 10 and 0. Match play coming in to the TV show. Has he ever been sharp? Some great golfers on tour as well. ADT Championship today, 3 o'clock Eastern Time on ABC. Annika Sorenstam, Kari Webb, Sayri Pak had a field of the women's top 30 money winners at the ADT Championship. That's today, 3 o'clock Eastern Time, noon on the West Coast on ABC Sports. After the third round, heading into the final round. Leaderboard LPGA action here. It's PBA time. Now our own Randy Peterson in action. <laughs> Come on, man. Let's go now. Come on, baby. Come on, buddy. Come like that all day. This is just a great shot that six pin is just gonna just gonna tickle it. Let's watch his reaction. Oh yeah, he's into it. The fall of 2000, last time Randy made a TV show, Indianapolis. Bodoy just his second ever appearance. Brian mentioned he has been outstanding in his first two so far. There's a solid 10 pin. And once again on the right lane. Hmm. Shakes his head. He knew through a good shot. Once again, we'll see a very hard straight ball. All right, 67 from the PBA Tour and points coming in, but that number will go up significantly after making his first show of the season. We're going to watch what we call torque right at the bottom. There is so much momentum there, and he applies almost all of it for speed and spin, and I tell you what, this young kid can get it going. Down one pin early. Place not a very big guy, but certainly has a big, powerful ball. And there we see it. Perfect ball on lane 23, 10 down in the pit. This ball is just going to shred the rack, what we call the messenger. The head pin's going to go to the wall. There was nothing to hit, but in case it was there, that's why we have the messenger. Randy trying to get off to an 11 pin lead. Three years him. is a long time. Yeah, now. I asked him last night. What was that last time? Let me think back. Let's see what year was it. He knew it was Indy. There was the fall. Crossing over a bit. Huh. 
high. Interesting. All right, we heard him say he went light one shot, high the next shot. That's the worst reaction a player wants. If you can't miss right or left, you want to be able to cheat a little, miss a little right, miss a little left. Multi-pin conversion rate so far. Brian, we saw Randy working on the shoes a bit, keeping them dry. Is that crucial? Well, some players need to have the correct footwear for different approaches. We have some approaches, the synthetics that, that might be a little slipperier, other ones which are a little tackier, and... Randy's somebody who needs a very stable foundation when he lets go of the ball, and he does his switching around to uh, accommodate with whatever's out there. We'll break down Randy's footwork in further detail. Coming up on our broadcast today, he is the subject of our Dexter approach. Well, that's the kind of week you want to have, 4-0, 3-0, 3-0. And again, we mentioned the incredible match play record in Detroit. Mike Scroggins was undefeated heading into the TV show, but he lost right away, so didn't run the table. In the pocket. You see how Randy moved about 10 or 12 left with his feet. He's going to hook the ball a, little, a lot more. Now look at that position at the foul line. Just excellent balance, excellent shot. We'll see if he does the same thing on the right. One pin match. Lay's looking to take an early nine pin lead. Search of a double. All lane 24. 60 feet to success for Bedoya. Just another great shot. Blyce will will be the first to admit, you know, he had a Lackluster start, didn't, and he's been out there working hard. Two, three hours, sometimes four. So he was a self-taught bowler. I'm trying to extend his lead to 19 pins. He saw the earnings a moment ago. He'll at least earn the 9,000. That was for fifth place, so he's up now to at least 10,000. That ball coming up a little bit light. Didn't look like he caught it with his fingers. He got it out to about the three board, which is what he wanted to do, but he just kind of lost it at the bottom of the swing. Two, four, five, not an easy spare, but certainly something that Randy wanted to see. Once again, this will be a hard and straight ball. Roberts gets his mark on lane 23. Blaze. Brian, unlike Randy, does not wear his emotions on his sleeve. He's pretty quiet, pretty focused out there. And he will be like that until he needs a strike to win. You're going to see a lot of emotion if he, be, he just he, he waits. He's very patient. He's trying to regulate that intensity. And Randy with an opportunity to take a four-pin lead with a strike here. Looking for a double, four-pin lead, three-pin. He's still lost on the right lane. Unfortunately, still in the match. You know, sometimes when, when you practice on the, on the uh, tournament pair, you're playing a particular line and you assume that you're going to play that on the TV show and you don't have enough time to get a feel for playing way in and that, that could be the case right here. Big improvement. Single pin conversions from Randy we saw last week to this in Grand Rapids nearly made the show and the pinheads are here in full force. Look at the improvement for Randy Peterson, and he says it all has to do with the ball. Well, he credits it to the X factor. You know, we look at uh, last week, he barely missed the telecast. He's using that confidence that he had last week to carry over into this week, which he did. Tight match halfway through. Two pin. Bums in light. Well, you know, as I said earlier, I don't think that he practiced enough going around them. He doesn't have quite the feel that Blaze has, and he's a little bit further right. But nonetheless, it's still a tight match. Picks up his mark with the two pin. A spare for our own Randy Peterson. Leaving our ESPN booth. 
to compete on the show, going for a championship. Standing in his way is Blaze Bedoya from Oregon. More exciting semifinal action comes your way next. Back in the PBA Pepsi Open near Philadelphia, and not only is our own Randy Peterson locked up in a tight semifinal match with Blaze Bedoya, he is also going to be the subject, Brian, of this week's Dexter approach. This week's profile, Randy Pedersen standing at 6'2". Very deliberate footwork. He needs to do that because he's got a long swing. I want you to notice his last step right here, how it goes in front. He drags his right foot on the ground. Perfect balance. You folks at home that want to learn how to slide and finish. Well, he lifted it up a little bit. He didn't know he was on camera, but... That's the way you want to get it done, folks. Randy Peterson, subject of this week's Dexter approach. Randy hopping down from the booth. Boo, 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 boo. On the air in a different fashion. We're glad to be joined by Hall of Famer Brian Voss, 22-time tour champ, and Leslie Cadell from Philadelphia. And now things really crank up for Blaze Fedoya. From Oregon. In the pocket. Just another real pretty shot by Blaze. Karen Porter. Yeah. He and you tilt it right there. From happens. Pepsi. National tilt. account sales manager with us here today. Tilt. Helping put on this great event. Just past the midway point, Blaze holds on to a seven pin lead with a strike and increase it to 17 pins. One time. Right here. May not be that emotional, but he certainly talks to himself just prior to the approach. Can he deliver? Seven pin. What a bad break. Another good shot. He knows this has got a chance. Seven pin stands. It's a great shot, though. He still leads this match, assuming he makes the spare. Perfect today. Over 92% for the season. Continues perfection in single pin conversion rate. Clean game. Clean game. Randy with four frames to go, slightly lost on both lanes, but still very much in this match. And he's going to have to do something that he hasn't done. He needs to hit the 1-3 on this right lane. We'll see what kind of adjustment he makes. I think he's going to move a little further left, try to get the ball to about the fourth, fourth board. Let's watch. This lane is giving him trouble. Not this time. Right and as hard as you can, my friend. Second straight year, Syosset Lanes will host the Cambridge Credit Classic. 20th time the PBA Tour has been on Long Island. Tommy DeLutz Jr. won it last year. Arena finals were held at the Mohegan Sun Arena. That's the site of the Tournament of Champions. This year, he took Chris Barnes in the championship match a year ago. That's where we're going next week, 1 o'clock Eastern time. Randy Peterson with a big strike. And we heard Randy say, right and as hard as you can. That means he's moving right, and he's going to put good speed on this. Showing it to you, ESPN in sync. That's good now. Right back in the match, three-pin lead, just absolutely pure. With that strike, he Blaze now trails by three, but he's been around the pocket the whole game. He likes this right lane. It's the first time he's ball Randy in match play, head to head. Gets the light hit. Yeah. He'll take it gladly. Late seven pin falling. It looks like he dropped it just a little soon. You know, normally he's about six, 12 inches over the foul line, gets it out to the third board, gets the light hit just barely. Thank you, he says. We're set up for a real good match. Three-pin game. A strike here in the ninth. Pedersen can go up and strike out and shut Bedoya out. Randy's working on a double. Blaze would like one here. Oh, 
himself to stay down for delivery. Solid 10. I don't know. Well, it wasn't a bad shot, just a bad break. Leaves just the 10 pin. The spear here will still trail by three pins. And Randy Pedersen's destiny is in his own hands. The most Blaze can shoot is 216 if he spares and strikes out. Randy Pedersen working at a 239 clip if he strikes out. Picks up his mark. In the ninth frame, and Randy working on a double strike. Puts him up 13 pins. Trying to continue the amazing streak of perfect match play record. And once again, he's going to be right. He's going to throw it hard. Double wood. That's a little too hard. That's a little too hard, he said. <laughs> wow. Fortunate just to leave only the 2-8, but now... Hard. We're going to see the 2-8, and the 10-pin is the one that he's watching. He doesn't want that to stand up, and the 6-pin barely clips it. Now just the 2-8 with a spare here. we got a 1-pin game with yes. one frame to go. Ninety percent this week. That's a good percentage rate with all the different kind of spares we leave. Should see a big hook ball. 2-8. Covers beautifully. <laughs> Trying to create a little drama for the fans out there. Took it all the way next to the gutter. Now, he knows if he gets it right next to the gutter, it's going to hook back. But I didn't want to be that close. Safe. One pin match. Randy Peterson can strike out three strikes, and he will shut out Blaze Bedoya. Anything less, Blaze can still win. Crossing. Oh, Trips out the eight. Tremendous bait. Oh, Randy Peterson just pulled this a little bit left. I don't think that he thought he had any chance of striking. Here comes a pin flying from nowhere. All right. See, and take advantage of this now. Two more strikes, and he's off to the championship match. Blaze is helpless for the moment. Randy's wife, Becky, was with us last week in Grand Rapids with their children, Savannah and Chad, watching closely down in Hollywood, FLA, and he's going to start over. Well, you heard a little screech on the floor. That means his right foot... There's there's a there's a, a surface on there that is that has a lot of friction. That's a hundred dollars. Squeak. That's a hundred dollars. He said. Yeah, that's a gimme. You owe him a hundy. Forget the hundy. I want to strike. He says. That one hundred dollar fine will seem pretty small if you can take the whole forty thousand dollar pot here. That's right. If he wins his thirteenth title. Blaze can't even watch. Two pin. Didn't get it. Leaves just the two pin with a spare here. He will force Blaze to throw two strikes to win. Just not his best effort. He really wanted it, but he can still win this. Needs to make this spare. Randy covers. Gosh, dog it. Gosh, dog it. Had his chance. Two strikes and two pin count for Bedoya, and he will win and take on Chris Barnes in the championship match. So Man. moments ago, Brian, Blaze could just sit and watch. A chance to be shut out. Now Randy's in the same spot. Yes, he is. And he struck the last three times on this lane, so he knows what to do. He knows where to throw it. Very calmly, he says, one, one ball. ball. One ball. He knows he can get two pins if he gets this strike, but this shot to advance to the title match. Strike and a two-pin count, that's it. 
the next round. He tells us last TV appearance taught him a lot about relaxing, tunnel vision, and staying focused with so many distractions that beset our five finalists. Does he have another in him? No! In high! Didn't get it. Randy Peterson will advance to the championship match. Randy Peterson is in the finals to take on Chris Barnes. Yeah, Daddy got lucky. They got to do a lot better than that against Chris Barnes. Well, Blythe knows when he let go. He just didn't get it out as far as he wanted to. A little, little soft on the speed, but nonetheless, a great performance this week. And Randy says, I get to bowl again. What a reaction of relief from our Randy Peterson. He's left the booth for the lanes this week. Now he's in the championship match with Chris Barnes. We are getting set for the championship match from Sproul Lanes outside Philadelphia at Springfield, the Pepsi Open. Peterson Barnes. First, let's tell you about next week. December 1st, 1 o'clock Eastern Time, on road to the PBA Championship rolls on. The tour moves to AMF Syosset Lanes in Syosset, Long Island, New York. The PBA Cambridge Credit Classic. Don't miss your favorite bowers next Sunday. And every Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern Time, here on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Chris Barnes has a lot on the line today with a win he overtakes. Walter Ray Williams Jr. atop the tour points list. And he told us before the matches today, it is crucial for him to get back to number one. He is ready to take on our very own Randy Peterson. The championship match is next. Last week at the PBA Banquet Classic near Grand Rapids, Eugene McCune beat out the hottest bowler on tour, Walter Ray Williams Jr. in the championship match. After 16 years on tour, it was Eugene's first title. And evident how badly the Indiana native won at this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He proudly showed off his new piece of hardware to his number one fan, three-year-old son, Kevin. Another great final this week between Randy Peterson and Chris Barnes. Chris, you said it yourself yesterday, you finished second a lot, some of it bad luck, some of it not finishing, not so in your semifinal match. What was the difference? Uh, well, you know, actually, I did have a little bit of luck. Uh, Frank bolt great. At the end, he lost his reaction a little bit, and I got a couple of lucky strikes. And uh, it kind of goes with the theme of the week. It's been a really good week. I've had a lot of good karma going, and uh, uh, we'll see. I could use a little bit more here in the final. Well, some frustrations for you, Randy, in your semifinal match. What's going on out there? Frustration? I'm the luckiest guy in the world just to win that game. Um, <laughs> I tried going straight. I tried hooking it, went back to going straight, made a couple bad shots when I had a chance to put Blaze away, and I'm just fortunate to be standing here next to you. So, Guys, thanks. Okay. Leslie, it's great to see Randy being interviewed instead of doing the interview in. Now the championship match head-to-head -head with Chris Barnes, and we're told Randy has a ball change to adjust to what problems he's run into on lane 24. Still the X factor, but a different ball. Well, players are often searching. I mean, he's probably this is the right ball. gonna be, this is the right ball. He knows exactly what he's doing. I would assume that he's gonna stand right and still go with the hard and straight. Let's see if the new ball pays off. It certainly does. X factor, X factor. <laughs> You no, know, two contrasting statistics. Randy Peterson, 42% of the time he's on television, he wins. Chris Barnes, on the other hand, 12%. I'm sure a stat that he would like to do a little bit better on. 26 appearances on three wins. Saw the titles in the career of Chris Barnes, his last championship, 2001 Hendersonville, Tennessee, near Nashville. And that's a little bit more than a year ago. Yeah, you know, guys. second of last year. One of the big stars of the PBA Tour, though. <laughs> Overall American at Wichita State. We talked about his Team USA bowling experience, international bowling as well. Really toughened him for moments like this. And he thrives on this match play format. Had some great years for legendary coach Gordon Vatican at Wichita State. Touch high there and a four pin. Well, that 
ball completes the move, Mark. Three. Only Barnes can save Norm Duke right now on the bubble. Randy Peterson wins. He's in. Norm's out. We have not seen Mike Albee in the show yet this year, Brian. Steve Hoskins did make a show a few weeks ago. Lost early. Single pin conversion numbers. More early Pepsi settings. Still 100% today for Barnes, but he'd rather have that strike ball, not the Pepsi spare ball in use. Now, this right lane was the one that was giving him the most difficulty. We're going to see he's going to use all of his experience, everything he knows about balls, technique. Rebel That's a very TV. good record. No question about it. An hour and a half show. <laughs> he knows about TV timing. We have live boxing action coming your way on ESPN after we're finished with business. But first, our own Randy Peterson going for a tie. Well, he said it was a bad shot. The, the one thing about throwing a bad shot is you can't adjust off it. You got to go out there and make a good shot. That hits the eighth board, goes out to about seven. He's trying to get it to five. Leaves a three, six, ten. Not an easy spare. We should see him go hard and straight to maintain a one-pin advantage. That was high on the head. He needs to get lucky, and he did. Covers. He's making it exciting. We are just absolutely throwing it all over the place. You're throwing it all over the place, and you're one pin ahead. Live coverage of the PBA Tour continues. Pepsi open outside Philadelphia. And yes, that is our Randy Peters. Going for a championship against Chris Barnes today. Ringing 10. Well, not a bad shot. Just a little, we call it the lazy 10 or the flat 10. The six pin just stays in the gutter. Doesn't have any energy. Right, with a spare here, we'll be all even after two and a half. Picks up the 10-pin in his first TV appearance since the fall of 2000. We mentioned back in Indianapolis. Hoping to earn a Hall of Fame berth. But that's got to be after he's inactive. Chris Barnes was very adamant about being, I want to lead every stat, every category. Boy, that messenger comes right across the deck and just missed the 10. Well, as we see many times, the head pin is going to go to the wall, and normally it gets it, but it just barely misses it. At least just the 10 pin. Oh, come on, he says. That's three good shots, and I got three nines. Just missed that 10 pin by a fraction. Is that Pepsi ball again? Picks up the mark. Having a great year. Second in points behind Walter Ray Williams Jr. If he wins this tournament today, he'll surpass the Hall of Famer. Third on the money list, Danny Wiseman. Second behind Walter Ray right now. An average he's there. Cashes, match play, everything. Just wants a victory. Oh. Eight pin. Oh, no, I'm mad. Are we done now? now? Are we done? Yeah. All right. He thinks this is a strike here. Now, come on. The only good thing about what's going on right now, when you, when you get taps, you want to get them in a row. Nine, 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 and then get the strikes. No open frames, all marks from each Chris Barnes and Randy Peterson, but just one strike. Randy in the first frame, that's been it. It's the PBA Pepsi Open Championship match. Who will step up and get some strikes going and claim the championship? Randy hopes the X Factor will help him. Randy Peterson, Chris Barnes are bowling for the trophy. And $40,000 in prize money going to the winner of the PBA Pepsi Open. Valuable tour points as well, especially 
for Chris Barnes, who can take over the lead. Fourth frame from Randy. He's been really struggling on the right lane. What's he going to do? Tan of the pit. That's what. That's what he's going to do. We saw that ball get out to about the third board. We know that if it gets to 3-2, it's going to hook back. Maintains a two-pin advantage with a strike here. Can increase his lead to 12 pins. Randy had a 300 last week. He had a 300 this week. Almost had another one. Shot 299. So he's no stranger to throwing strikes. But he needs to get it going now. Before the Grand Rapids event last week, he hadn't bowled a 300 since the 99 tour season. Here it's a four pin. This is just a seesaw battle of taps, of nines. A good shot. Got to slow down. He said if he gets it out to two or three, we know it's going to hook back. This one gets out to almost the first board and it almost goes high, but just leaves the four pin. We'll maintain a two pin lead with a spare here. So the 300 numbers, they're having three this week in the tournament. Dave Diancimat in round one, Randy Peterson in round two, Tom Baker in the round of 32. Rolling perfect games at the Pepsi Open. And we've watched Chris Barnes throw four good shots and four nine counts. He doesn't like something. He was stuck. Distractions, even something like that would really bother him in the past, but now he's much more focused. Big hook on lane 24, however, just eight pins. Just take your time. If it's not going to go, just wait. Don't run up there. You know, we talked early with Chris yesterday, and he didn't, he didn't have a good feel here. You know, normally a player will back off, start his routine all over again. But when we see him balk, it's because he doesn't, he doesn't start right. He doesn't feel right. If he'd had that over, he'd have, he'd have put the ball down and start all over in his routine. Nonetheless, with a spare, maintains a four-pin deficit halfway. Who will step up and take control? Anybody's game. Anybody's game. see a shot that was a strike Count big down. strike from Barnes just great concentration great wrist action great balance finally thank you it's about time he says now can Randy Peterson answer it that was Barnes first strike of the match on the sixth frame Randy looking for his third on his sixth frame got it gets the light hit stays right with him it's not just a job, it's an adventure, believe me. Every ball thrown is an adventure for me. Come on now, let's make a good shot here. I have to assume after his last shot in the left lane, he's probably gonna move a board left, still try to get it to about the second board. I saw the strike percentage numbers way down. This to take a 14 pin lead. Maybe just who gets the marks at the right time. A double for Randy. That is big. He wasn't quite Congratulations, sure. Congratulations, my friend. <laughs> All right. Great footwork. You're going to see that sliding. Great balance. But he didn't get this out to the second board. It hit about the fourth board, but it held on for a perfect strike. He said, thank you. Now, Barnes. Can he answer the challenge? Seven frame, two pin. Just the two pin. He's kind of searching a little bit. What's going on out there? Is it me? Is it the lanes? Only he knows that. As Max shrinks from 245 to 225 with that nine pin count. 
And again, again, still just the one strike in this championship match for Chris Barnes. We're coming to you from the PBA Pepsi Open. It's Bro Lanes outside Philadelphia, about a half hour from downtown Philly. Springfield, PA. Dave Ryan, Brian Voss, Hall of Famer, filling in for Randy today. Glad to have with us Leslie Goodell providing the interviews. Live boxing coming your way next here on ESPN when we finish business first. We see Barnes coming considerably high and just get a seven pin count. You mentioned something about a ball choice. That means he thinks that it might be the ball. Only he knows that. Live boxing on the way. Needs to make this spare to keep the pressure on Randy. With a spare there, we're about in the seven and a half frames. Chris Barnes, if he struck out, would shoot 212. Randy Peterson, with the next two strikes, would be in the high 220s and any kind of a fill in the 10th frame. But these two strikes would certainly make the last frame a little bit easy, easier, and he'll be the last one up. Looking for a triple is Randy Peterson and a 27 pin lead. 10 pin. Denied. He's going to have to work for it. Well, just a, a light, lazy 10, what we call it. The six pin just stays there. It tickles it. It's going to let him think that it might hit it, but uh, now he's going to make the spare. Makes this, he'll have a 16 pin advantage. Love the sliding reaction. Covers the 10. Another mark for Randy. Chris Barnes right behind Walter Ray Williams Jr. with a win. He will surpass the Hall of Famer for first place. Randy has a lot of points coming his way after a second straight strong performance. The Banquet Classic outside Grand Rapids last week. And here in suburban Philly, he has been outstanding. Ninth frame, big shot for Randy. He doesn't want to have to go in the 10th frame and throw two strikes, but if he strikes once here and Chris strikes out, he'll only need one in the 10th. On the 23. Yeah. Oh, trips the four. He's feeling it. He knows there's nothing Chris can do right now to shut him out. We're going to see this get all the way out to about the first board again. And when it does, it's going to come screaming back. He knows it's a little high, but he trips the four out from behind. Now Chris is going to have to throw three strikes in a row to force Randy to get the first one in the 10. Night frame for Barnes. Needs it badly. Gets it. And he gets it. This is the lane that's been giving a little trouble. He gives it a little more room. But this one made it back. All right, 10th frame. Chris Barnes must strike on this next ball to have any chance. If he doesn't strike, Randy can go up there and get eight pins on two balls and still win this, but he must get this next strike. Live boxing is coming your way here on ESPN as soon as we wrap up. PBA Pepsi Open from Greater Philadelphia. Now, this strike, should Chris get it, would force Randy to fill. If he gets two strikes, he'll force Randy to throw the first one in the tenth, but he must have this one. That was the scenario. Ninth frame, can he do it again in the tenth? Yes! Oh, he got it! The fight can dance for a second. It didn't know it was going to fall, and it does. This is going to be a light hit. It has a chance. It has a chance. He's watching the five. It's standing, but no, it falls. That gives him life. Now, that makes Randy fill the tenth frame. This next one will force Randy to get up and throw at least one in the tenth, or only one. Big shot. Just one strike in his first eight frames, but rallies late in this match.
talking to himself. So does Randy. He's getting ready to throw that strike. He should be assuming that Chris is going to get this. Barnes responded in match play in this same scenario. Can he do it again? And he got the leg here. That shot will make Randy get the first one in the 10th, but still, he should, he needs to get at least seven pins. That would put his count at above 209, which would force Randy to get a strike. If he gets five, Randy can still go up there and get a spare and strike, so count very important on this shot. lives for these moments. Does he respond again? Not this time. Eight pin count and a late tap. That was huge. Barnes Very you know, got away with one there. Okay, if he gets six, six is not good. Seven is okay. Eight's even better. It forces Randy to get the first strike in the 10th to win after three years. Barnes can be watch. Oh, he got it! Yes! yes! Gets the light hit. That's a happy man right there and a sad man. Just needs two pins. And Randy Peterson will be a PBA Tour champion once again. It has been three plus years since he's won more than count, two Kirk. years. He's asking himself, all I need is count. He yeah. wants to make sure just he's going to throw the rocket to the head pin. Just stay behind the foul line, and you'll be going to the TSC. He was off the bubble. There's your winner. And he's back in. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Once again, Randy Peterson is a champion. Brother, great ball. Great ball. Great ball. I love you, kids. Becky, I can't believe it. Uh, that's for you boys in the truck. Thank you, Randy. What a show. His wife, Becky. Daughter, Savannah. Son, Chad. I want a Pepsi. I want a Pepsi. You get a lot more than a Pepsi, Somebody Mr. Give me a Peterson. Pepsi. He's a PBA champion. Lucky number 13 for Randy. ESPN's exclusive live coverage of the PBA Pepsi Open is brought to you by Odor Eaters. Put Odor Eaters in. Kick foot odor and wetness out. By Miller High Life. To live simply, proudly, boldly, manly. This is the High Life. And by Cambridge Credit Counseling. Find out how good it feels to be debt free. The first time the PBA Tour returns to Philadelphia, Randy Peterson's going to want to come back year in and year out. Congratulations to him. His victory today guarantees him a spot on the PBA Tournament of Champions December 15th. Be sure to join us next Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern Time, the PBA Cambridge Credit Classic from Syos at Long Island, New York. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Boxing is next. Now for Brian Voss, who filled in so well for Randy. And Leslie Goodell, it's Dave Ryan saying so long from Philadelphia. Congratulations!